Number one. I hope this publishes. Last night the internet went out before I could get this out. First of all, I'm a college student in my second year at uni. Overall, it's pretty nice. Freedom is pretty cool. If you call having a curfew and strict dorm regulations freedom. My grades are decent, and there are a few attractive guys in my classes. However, currently, it sort of sucks. As my entire campus is on lockdown, the text to alert students of said lockdown arrived around 8 this morning, and we haven't heard a word since. I room with two other girls, a hyper redhead named Ali and a girl from Africa named Samantha. Both of them are nice enough and we get along. Hence the we. At first, the three of us just assumed it was just a test. They have those occasionally, just to ensure that everything is okay, that the emergency alert system is working properly, and the students know how to respond. However, those tend to stop pretty quickly. It's been hours. Not to mention the yelling we heard at the beginning, though that could have just been the initial panic, and ended up stopping about an hour after the initial lockdown scared the daylights out of Sam though. Before anyone questions our safety precautions, we have the blinds down, the door is locked, there's a very small wooden chair shoved up against the handle, though I'm not sure it'll do. Sam and Allie attempted to push the dresser from the bedroom in front of the front door. According to protocol, we're supposed to barricade all possible exits, but the doorway is so small we can't fit a damn thing in there. Figures that the school board being a cheapskate would cost us our lives. I always joke about it, them being so cheap, but I don't really think it would actually become a problem in the future. I don't know. I know I might be overreacting, but are lockdowns really supposed to last this long? Internet and cellular services keep cutting in and out, so it's hard to contact people in the other dorms, though Sam managed to get a hold of her mom briefly. She wasn't aware of the lockdown. She said there wasn't anything on the news. I guess that rules out school shooter because reporters always end up on the site as it is happening. They gobble this stuff up. I figured posting it here would at least give me something to focus on, I guess. Allie and Sam are talking about checking out around the hallways. Maybe we can find some students who actually know what the fuck is going on. My college is pretty decent sized, so it shouldn't be that hard to find somebody. Hopefully we get the all clear soon. I figure if we don't here in the next couple of hours though, we should look around. It may have been a false alarm. Either way, I'll make sure to edit this as soon as I know what's going on. Edit 1 Last night at around 9, Sam decided she'd had enough. Allie and I chickened out, so we stayed here. Sam said she'd be right back. She was going to try to find the head of our floor. She hasn't come back. Neither Allie nor have I heard anything. It looks like there is a few posts on social media and confusion from the other students, but all of them are in the same situation as we are. There was brief talk about meeting up, but if Sam didn't come back, I don't want to think about that. Also, one of you mentioned calling the police. They hung up on us, said it was a prank, not to call back again. Shit. I don't know what to do. Final edit. I'm sorry for such a late update. It's a hectic week. Figuring out funeral arrangements mainly. The last time I edited this, Sam had just left. And it was mostly quiet. After I attempted to call the police, Allie and I spent most of the night studying. Exams are important, and it gave us something to do while we waited. I guess I passed out sometime the night before because I woke up to a puddle of drool on my textbook and the sound of police sirens. God, there was blood everywhere. I mean everywhere. It was on the fucking ceiling of the hallways. Over a fourth of the students' population is missing, and that isn't counting the bodies they did manage to find. They were, I don't know, torn apart by something. After the police escorted the remaining student body out of our dorms, most of us just went home. My school isn't a very large one, so all lost. 
at least one person. No one knows where the missing are. All we know is whatever did this, it is in Idaho area. The officer says that they try to keep situation like this out of the public eye. God only fucking knows what that means. If your college starts giving an alarm, do not brush it off. Barricade yourself immediately, and if anyone knows what the fuck did this to Sam, my Sam, please tell me where that bastard is. Number 2. I went to school in a post-Columbine world. Lockdowns were always taken very seriously, despite the fact that we lived in a fairly rural area where most people knew each other. There were regular petitions to allow students to carry guns in school, who knew how long it would take the police to arrive if something were to happen, but I'm obviously not on this side of Reddit to debate gun control so I'll get to the point. Most lockdowns are drills. I'm gonna tell you about one that was not. I've always been a pretty nervous, paranoid person. For example, throughout middle and high school, I despised being in the cafeteria because I always seemed to get stuck sitting in some corner nowhere near an exit. It made me anxious, realizing just how much distance I'd have to cross to get out, even if something as innocent as a food fight broke out. In upstairs classrooms, occasionally I glance out the windows and ponder where or not the drop might kill me, or if I'd make it out with just a broken arm or a leg. In downstairs classrooms, I tended to sit near windows unless forced to sit somewhere else. But like most routines, after enough rep Repetition. You can get used to almost everything. If you work in a school, you probably know this like the back of your hand. In the event of a lockdown, teachers are supposed to lock the door, turn out the lights, and herd the students into a part of the room that cannot be seen from the window panel in the door. This always seemed a bit ridiculous to me. I once had an English class in a room where the only spot that you could not be seen from the people from the door was, ironically, right behind the door. The idea of us all just lining up up while somebody jiggled the knob outside sounded horrifying. They have a special code for if it's real. A girl named Kelly once informed our entire algebra class if they say lockdown three times it's a drill, four times it's real. 11th grade swung around. Now officially an upperclassman, I let a certain confidence seep into my walk. I was 16. Next year I'd graduate. I was going to college. I practically owned this dump. I'd see everyone I hated working at McDonald's, you know. The usual 16 year old spiel. They started in the morning announcements early today. I thought maybe someone had parked in a teacher's spot again. Someone came over the loudspeaker and said, Lockdown. 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 I was more caught off guard by the fact that it sounded like a secretary was making the announcement rather than anyone else. Only after a moment or two did it sink in. This wasn't a drill. I stood there, completely motionless, wondering what the hell I was supposed to do. Finally, I lunged towards the door and yanked it open. Peering out into the hall, every door was shut. I was on the second floor. I thought I heard distant yelling from below. My panic began to settle into a slow, cold fear that was pulled into the pit of my stomach and spread down my legs. I darted back into the bathroom, trying to rationalize things to myself. Maybe I misheard it and it was just a drill. I tried to remember how the woman on the loudspeaker had sounded. Had she been frightened? Forced calm? I didn't know. Not knowing was the worst part. The police had to be on their way, if it was real, I assured myself. So as long as I stayed put, everything would be fine. What potential school shooter was going to check the bathroom, hmm? That said, I ran to the last stall. The one for people with wheelchairs and scrambled up onto the toilet. Should I lock the stall door? No. There was no point. If they did come in, it'd be obvious someone was in there then. What if they somehow saw me through the small spaces in the door? Could I somehow wiggle on the ground from one stall to the next, evading them? 
By this point, I was slightly hysterical, but I knew in the back of my mind, like you always know in these situations, if they did come in here, I would probably die. Ridiculous enough, I began preparing my last lines. What would I say? Should I plead with them? What if it was someone I knew? Maybe I could talk them down. But I couldn't even convince myself, never mind someone I already knew that was homicidal. Should I try to be a hero? Go for their gun? Right, and get shot in the face. Perhaps I could stall them. Stall. Them. I started to laugh. I didn't know why. I was shaking, crouched on a grimy public high school toilet seat. I literally laughed about potty humor. My manic chuckles faded into harsh breathing and I concentrated on my knees. I told myself I wouldn't look up, no matter what. I thought I heard a loud noise from down the hall and flinched, although I had no idea what it had been. I tried to still my breathing and only succeeded in feeling faint. And then I heard it. Footsteps. I was sure of it. Maybe it was a cop, I told myself weakly. The footsteps drew nearer, echoing hollowly on the tiled floor of the school. I hadn't been raised particularly religious. Right then and there, I started to make bargains. I didn't care if I was shot, so long as it didn't kill me, or paralyze me actually. That might be worse, I just wanted to go home. If whoever was in charge of this shit just made sure I got home, I'd do whatever the hell they said to do for the rest of my life. Maybe if they didn't have a gun, maybe it was a knife. Maybe I could get out of here with a few nasty scars and a story. The door opened and I went blank. I'm not sure how to describe it. I was there and yet not there at the same time. I felt completely removed from the entire event. I was there in the stall, but yeah, I also wasn't. Like maybe it didn't really matter that much either way. Like I was beyond all of it. For a fleeting second, I wondered if I'd collapse and died of fright. I knew they were there. I heard them. The first stall swung open with a groan, as did the second. I tried to close my eyes, and I found I couldn't. My eyelids refused to cooperate. Third stall. I was convinced I could hear them breathing. I wondered what they were thinking. Were they excited? Could they hear my breathing? God, I thought, don't let it be someone I know. Fourth stall. The loudspeakers crackled on. The lockdown is now completed. Students and staff, thank you for your cooperation. I heard them pause, and I heard them leave the bathroom. Doors swinging quietly shut behind them. I didn't leave that stall for another five minutes. My first period teacher was very annoyed, but I didn't really care. I told him what had happened. He called the vice principal down. I told her what had happened. She seemed skeptical. I had never heard any more about it. There was no evidence of anyone having gone in that bathroom during the lockdown, aside from what I claimed. But someone had been in there with me, and they'd been so close to finding me. Of that I was certain. It hadn't been a lockdown. Number three. Hey, so I'm sorry if this gets cut off, but I'm not sure how much time I have. My name is John, and I'm afraid I'm about to die. If these are my last moments, there's still a lot I want to say. I am currently hiding in a bathroom stall, scared out of my damn mind. I'm in school, summer school to be precise. I got a D in math, didn't want to retake the class, so here I am. What a dumb decision. There are about a hundred kids left for the summer, and we're all hiding. They're all in the classrooms. I'm in the bathroom because I was the one in the hall when the announcement came on. Our school has a mandatory lockdown drill, so I know what a drill sounds like. They also teach us codes. Attention students and staff, lockdown immediately is a drill. I've heard that. What I haven't heard before today 
what I've only heard of was the code for hide. I was just walking back from the water fountain when I heard it. Attention, lockdown, code blue. Lockdown, code blue. For as long as I live, hopefully past today. I hope I never hear a voice like that again. Even through the crappy comm system, I could hear the panic in her voice. This was real. I wasn't so panicked so much at first. Code blue just meant to hide in place. It could have just been a robbery outside the school or something. I hid in the bathroom because I could get in trouble for not following procedure. It was about a minute before I heard the gunshots. I've grown up around guns. I know what they sound like. It was chilling. One, two, three shots, then shouting. One more shot, and then silence. The worst part was that they sounded like they came from inside the school. The gunshots were echoing throughout the hallways. I knew exactly what this was right away. It was a school shooting. I don't think I'm wrong. Something tells me you're gonna hear about this on the news. And I'm just hiding in the bathroom. What you're reading, I guess, is my last goodbye. At this point, I'll just press send if I think I'm gonna die. Shit. More gunshots. And lots of them this time. Screaming. It sounds like kids are being mowed down with an automatic weapon. Shit. I don't know what to do. I thought I was being overdramatic at first, but now I'm fucking scared, guys. And I'm writing a little bit faster now because these gunshots are getting louder. He could be getting closer. I don't know what you've all been through, but it's indescribable the not knowing your life is in danger or not. Thinking it is, thinking that at any second, I could die. I always thought I would be the kind of kid that would stand up to a shooter and take a bullet to save someone else's life. But now that I feel the fear that I'm feeling, I'm saying fuck that. I don't want to die. Let someone else take the bullet. I don't want to see a gun staring at me in the face. I don't want to hear the shot that I know will kill me. I don't want to feel the bullet rip through me. It would just be pain. Pain in nothingness. I can't feel that. You hear about shootings on the news and you feel a little scared. There's nothing you can do to defend yourself, but you're always safe in the knowledge that 99.9% .9 of the time that shit's gonna be nowhere near you. I thought that, and I was wrong. Look at me now. I thought I was safe too, but there's nothing you can do to defend yourself. I could die here today because of randomness, terror, and that's not a damn thing I could have done to stop it. Every person is in danger every day of their life. Another gunshot, much closer than the rest. Now I hear footsteps. I'm so scared. I'm 17 years old. It's so unfair. Everyone else gets to live their carefree life. And fuck me. It's all over. I don't fucking deserve this. The footsteps are getting closer. Louder. I'm about to die. Shit. I wanna live. I can't die today. I really, really don't wanna die. God, please don't. Hello, my name is Rodin, and if you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and other social media accounts. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment below. And just remember, all these videos and all these testimonies are from people just like you.